Are you an artist list that is feeling stuck posting on every single platform? If you are, I get it. I used to have a lot of art block. I've figured out three habits and techniques that have really helped me over the last three years. If you're a beginner, then these are a few events in your art journey. And if not, then these are just going to be a great reminder. So to help you avoid these common mistakes, let's get started. Hi, and if you don't know who I am, my name is Jen. I am a small digital artist here on YouTube, and I want to help make content for all the other artists out there. So my first habit that really helped me grow in the last three years is I joined a digital art class. It is the Rostra's Digital Art Bootcamp and I joined in 2021 as he was recording it live on his Patreon. For the first couple months, everybody was really gung-ho about posting and interacting with a lot of other people and I really recommend if you want to meet a lot of like-minded artists in the community and it was in monthly classes. It was two classes a month. The best thing that I learned from Ross Draws is that he moves from being a beginner and an intermediate into how to sell your work at the end of the course. And the one technique that I will really take away from him is that you should always shade with red and a big round brush to block in all of your shapes, deeper reds on a multiply blur to get a realistic sense of how the person is going to look. It gives a really good base and the old masters use a lot of burnt sienna in their work. The digital art bootcamp is a year-long course but you don't need to do that. What I recommend is you can do in-person workshops or Pixabun had a workshop a couple of weeks ago so there are multiple discord servers that are hosting you can hone your anatomy and color theory and I will be leaving a couple of them on the screen so you can check them out and I will be leaving them in the description. Find your favorite artists on Twitch, follow them as they're doing their artwork live. I know Ergo Josh has a really good Twitch streaming channel where he is working on his anatomy and he gives out his resources ahead of time so that you can follow along with him. And if you have any questions on anatomy or colors, you can ask him live. If it's a simple question, he will definitely answer. But if not, he will probably point you to a lot of other materials on YouTube or different videos that can help answer your question. And all artists on Twitch answer questions pretty quickly. So I think it is a great way for you to start off in your digital art journey. And for keeping notes on all of these classes, I use a traditional notebook. It serves as a really great outline for what was in the video. And since most artists let you keep all of their videos for lifetime access, it is great so that if I need to polish a piece, can just look. I have all of my notes physically. I don't need to be carrying my laptop or my iPad around. And if I do need to pull up the supplementary videos, I don't have to be going through all of my emails. I can just find the information in my notebook. And I usually pick out the uh, techniques of the artist so that it is much easier to find later. My next habit that really helped me improve the last couple of months is a work in progress illustration file open on your Procreate app or Clip Studio Paint with every single thing you're working on at one time, whether it be fan arts or draw this in your styles, commissions, personal work. You can easily jump from one to the other without feeling uh, burnout or if you get bored then you can move from the sketch phase of one piece like I did here into the rendering and coloring phase of this other one. My favorite part of the art process is doing the rendering and the final touches, so doing color dodge, blur effects, because I will go ham and take probably two or three hours just tweaking colors. You get frustrated on an assignment or if one of your reels blows up and you can keep yourself going in the background while you're working on the next thing to post, I really recommend it for keeping up your momentum and 
getting a lot of quick success or when you're working on a lot of different ones simultaneously and you can take your time crafting a really good reel when you're posting a lot of other work on your feet. My next piece of advice would be to get critique from a lot of other artists. Most digital artists have a discord channel so that you can get in touch with the artists and receive feedback on your work or just have a nice time most most channels have a finished work channel work in progress channel a finished work critique channel there are multiple different channels that you can use depending on the artist and how big their community is to get multiple critiques from multiple different artists you don't need to listen to every critique but it is good to see where they're coming from. Practical tip is if you are working in Procreate, take a good screenshot of the work that you are trying to get critiqued and ask one or two really well-defined questions of what you need to improve on or if something feels off, what would that be? Just so that the other artists trying to help you have a clear idea of what you're trying to focus on. Back in 2021 when I posted my reel that blew up, I didn't have anything else that I was working on at the time and I got paralyzed with a lot of art block for six months and what got me out of it was two different things. I started doing a lot of TikToks and Instagram reels with a lot of trending sounds and audios which got me really excited to post again and I found a small community of creative artists that were really encouraging me to post all of my work and excited to see what I was posting next and it really helped me get out of my art block so I started posting again Wednesday in 2022 last year it was a good post to get me out of my art block and I started posting again for the rest of the year. Also, if you're trying to get out of art block, I recommend trying to do a challenge. I always do the Inktober challenge at the end of the year in October and it's a 31 day drawing challenge and I absolutely love it because you get a prompt list every single day and you can change the prompts to whatever you like. I use the prompts list that I was given with a combination of Brandon Sanderson novels and it was a lot of fun. I really recommend doing a challenge if suggestions really aren't working. So how I grew as an artist in the last three years is I did a lot of courses on multiple pieces at once and I'm still doing that today. And I got a lot of critique from a lot of different artists. The projects you're working on keeps everything fun and exciting. And I hope that with these tips, you can challenge yourself to make some new art which of these tips do you want to try? And let's keep inspiring each other and I will see you in the next video.